both these characters are very slippery and hard to hit, so I wonder how precise all their hitboxes are going to be thrown around. Like, they have to play very carefully. Obviously, Duck Hunt has a lot of nice, like, huge covering zones like the, the Gunman, Clay Pigeon, even the Can is very annoying to deal with, but Pichu is a whole other story in and of itself. So hard to hit. So hard, in fact, they had to nerf him and increase. Okay, I'm going to go over there and box. just tell them they can start. Yeah, you tell them, bro. Here, <laughs> B. You got it. All right. John Number's about to let them know to start because, I don't know, we've just been chilling for a while. But hey, fine. I'm down to just talk to myself for all of eternity. No other caster with me, but I'm down. I'm just here. I can't wait to see some fire Smash Ultimate gameplay. The best of the best. A hey, little John cameo right there. Fizzling, fizzling, fizzling. Mm. All right, all right. Game's about to get started. Here we go. Once again, Fawn versus Caster Man, Duck Hunt, Pichu. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we're about to see. Small battlefield pick. Immediate dash attack. Caster Man wants Fawn to know that he is going to press as many buttons in his face and not letting him uh, camp, not letting him be patient, not, let it, not giving him time to think. Yeah, that's basically the right thing to do when you're fighting these characters. You don't want them to get away and make space and do their duck hunt thing. Yeah, yeah, duck hunt shenanigans. They, they, duck hunt has a lot of tricks up his sleeve or up his bird, I would say. Oh, my. Pichu's got T-Jolt, and Pichu's got a bunch of, you know, disjoints of visibility on some of his moves. But once again, you know, Pichu is so light. Pichu will explode from any uh, nice setup Fong can, can deliver. And there. T-Jolt, get that out of here. Oh, they're covering that neutral getup, but I'm sure Fawn clicked the button and that's why that happened. First bunch of cast a man, though. Very nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see how Fawn's going to retaliate. How is he going to respond? He doesn't want Pichu starting those low percent bread and butters because, you know, that'll spell danger and it'll just be the more extra credit the pile's on, the harder it'll be to make the comeback. Grass is green because it's green stuff. <laughs> All right, what's that, guard? Get off me, off air. All right, Gunman killing, uh, getting rid of Pichu's stock right there. Pichu is light, so that Gunman will kill around 120, 130%, whatever it was. Up air. Those T Jolts are <laughs> definitely a saving grace in this matchup, or helping so much. Starting combos, infiltrating neutral. You can do so much with those days. Get off me, puts them in there. Caster Man is playing uh, very careful. I, well, not careful, but having a T Jolt just covering him in front and then being patient when it counts. During these kill percents, I, I'm sure Fawn would expect Caster Man to be like, you know, more run up T Jolt, just pressing options to get the stock off. But now he's got to be careful at ledge, though, because one can, one forward smash, down smash, whatever Fawn's looking for, will take the stock. I'd but, say, based on the way Caster Man is playing, he's fully aware of the threat that the uh, Clay Pigeon has in yeah. that it just combos into stuff, and considering how light Pichu is, um, that's probably dangerous starting at yeah. like 80%, and honestly. It sets into there. a tech situation, too. That's crazy. I didn't know it would do that. Oh. And DBZ for both of their stocks going Yo, down. You'll love to see it. <laughs> Especially game one. Cute little talk coming up from Fawn. We all, we all appreciate that. All right, Can and Gunman sandwiching Pichu. What's the move? This little dash attack, or little forward throw dash attack combo. What's the combo? It's the tech read with the back air, trying to push the advantage state, but Fawn just going and recovering high. Caster Man has some very nice recovery angles, too. Mm -hmm. we, we hate seeing the Pichu, Pikachu, as these. They always have to happen, I feel like, once a set. Not happening this game, though. Uh oh. Oh, that's such a, oh. such a scary situation to be in with the can right there. What's stuff for you to do? Great pigeon jumping right over most of uh -oh. these projectiles, but. Set up, Nothing. not getting the back air off of it. Oh, oh is that it? Block. That might be it because ja wow. Oh my god, Pichu F smash it. insanely strong. It's so strong, yeah, for no reason, too. I mean, there's a reason okay. it, it was super yeah. strong in melee, but but giving like the jab lock situation, too. Like, I feel like it's relatively easy getting that jab lock, especially with like sour nair or a T jolt setup. It, it, it's like Pichu is, has duck on set level setups in of itself, but they actually kill it's very like the important ones like this. Can can be. Right. Game two. Let's see what stage players are gonna choose. Oh, Zane did the uh, did the gesture for run it back. Run it back. Right. Small Should be interesting. Yeah, Let's that, see that game was very close, so there's no surprise here. Let's see what these competitors are gonna bring, how they're gonna adapt. What is this song? 
I'm not sure. It's like you're, you're fighting the lemur dark or something. It's like it's an probably epic, a Tekken song. Some epic boss battle music. And with a dog and a mouse rat on screen. Even funnier. Hmm, Alright. Gotta be careful though for that can. A T jolt is definitely helping getting through a lot of Duck Hunt's neutral tools, but Vaughn has to place his setups very carefully. Okay, going back into a back air, the conversion. Wow. Perfectly placing the can at neutral go distance. Just letting Castaway Man, Caster Man know that if he neutral get ups over and over again, just to keep in mind that it's a dangerous spot to be in. Alright. Quick little forward tilt, just poking him, getting him out of there. He was standing at roll, dis roll distance too, possibly covering it for the fact that Caster Man thought that he would have to roll there. So, excellently, some like subversion of expectations right there. It was excellent. Can set up. Oh my god. <laughs> Run up shield. Get that can back in Duck Hunt's face. Uh, you can't let Duck Hunt hit you with cans like that when they're recovering, though. Yeah, all of a sudden, Casterman's percent is starting to snowball, and at this rate, one strong move from Duck Hunt again will get this kill. But a oh, great down smash, kind of out of nowhere, just calling out Fawn for uh, invading his space there. Of course, he still has a mountain to climb. He has a whole stock, but Pichu definitely has the, the combo potential and, and uh, damage output to get that one. You just got to be careful, though, because once again, one strong hit will just take the stock. And the can, that'll do it. Little okay. jab, it'll get off your tool. Clay Pigeon just racking up damage into the can. Fawn's going to push this advantage. Stay and reading the roll with the F smash. Not going to kill, but Pichu's so damn light. One other strong land, Caster Man. You gotta get back to the stage, goddamn. All right, on once again, getting him off stage, setting up with the can. So much, this game honestly has just snowballed out of control for Caster Man once that first stock was taken. After that first stock, it seems Fawn just has. Oh, still oh. not dead. This wow. is Pichu we're All talking right. about. Oh, oh, Pichu. That can's going everywhere. A quick little uh, spike into zero to death from Pichu could take this game, but the way Fawn's playing, I don't think so. Okay, get him off stage. No jump either, so Fawn no did oh, no. He didn't know he okay. had a jump. That's you know what? That's one way to avoid the edge guards. Just <laughs> die yourself. You, can, you can't take my stock. It's all on me. Paid a lot of heat to that can, too. He knows he can't attack it wow. because the can wow. just... Ex okay. And the back okay. here just sniping his jump. Honestly, I'm not sure if that was intentional, but knowing Fawn, it probably was. It probably was. Just catching that mosquito in the air and just swatting him out Jesus. of this game. What a good game that was, though. Yeah. Honestly. Very excited. I'm looking forward to seeing what, how this uh, game number three goes. Yeah, first, we have a DBZ in game one, and then we just have the snowballing effect from Fawn coming out. Extra credit upon extra credit. Uh, they are backing up and not playing on small battlefield. He's actually yeah. asking for counter picks yeah. right now. <laughs> Fawn has struck Final Destination and Smashville. And I think that, oh, he's going to pick Town. You're going to leave Town open for Pichu? Town open for Pichu? I mean, it's a good duck hunt stage, yeah. too, but... You have a lot of space, you know, just to run around and get your setups going, but still... You got, you got a lot of... Ha you got to have a lot of bravery to be letting Pichu go to Town and City without a fight. I, that's all I got to say. Yeah, but Fawn is feeling confident after that last game. I mean, he got down... He was down to last stock, but still went in his favor. And by the way he was playing, the momentum was clearly on his side. Let's see how Casterman's going to turn this around. Little, immediately swinging out of the gates. Both these opponents are, are ready for this game three, and uh, I think we got another exciting game coming up. All right. Taking slider, doing taking slider things. The spacing, play pigeoning, grabbing, keeping Pichu in his shield. If you can just trap Pichu in his shield, then, you know, <laughs> the rest gets much easier. You just have time for your setups. You can grab it out of nowhere. So far, the stage pick is definitely benefiting Duck Hunt, and these play pigeons are out of hand, getting out of Pichu's grab, and definitely saving Fawn from a lot of percent. Fully agreed. All right, I gotta go. Devin was right. not successfully assassinated by Nate, so okay. here he is. Pleasure to have you, Joel. All right. Hope you all enjoy the rest of the tournament. And there Back it is, there, Town and City works out. So early. He okay. Just caught now his... goodbye. That was a great jump. <laughs> all right, peace. Okay, let's see. Duck Punk catching Pichu, landing with the up air. Great. Keep him up in the air. Don't let him come back to center. Fawn is commanding. The center's an amazing F tilt to catch Pichu uh, side specialing into the stage. 
I honestly couldn't tell if that was a two frame, but I think he just caught it right before he grabbed the ledge. And now we're basically at e we're at an even game once again. Two stocks, a very low percentage. Can set up, 27. Another can set up. This percent's just gonna keep building. Pichu's not careful. That stock can be sniped at 60-70% with another F smash at ledge or a down smash potentially. Wow, the up tilt doesn't cancel out the gunman, so that's one thing Casterman's gonna have to keep in mind, that he can't just attack the gunman with one quick, like, up tilt or, or down tilt potentially. He needs to get a solid hit on them. That's just gonna benefit Fawn more and more. But, so, but honestly, this is not impossible for Casterman at all. One good combo, one good setup. He has to get it now, and unfortunately, the up air just swatting the mosquito right out of here. Last stock situation. How's Casterman gonna overcome this mountain? Another back air? As soon as I, as soon as I say that, I feel like Casterman's got a whole ass mountain to climb. He just, he just manages to put Fawn off stage with a back air, potentially leading into a stock. It's crazy. I feel like Casterman's playing well after he loses his stock, but it would be amazing if he could just stock tank and play forever. On a second stock, at least. Okay, a little down throw but just narrowing out of that confirm. It seems like Casterman needs to be more patient with those confirms, but great down smash. Town and City, high blast zones, which is strange because in Smash 4 out of the lowest blast zones, don't ask me. Unfortunate SD, but you had to dodge Pichu's ears. You didn't want to get swatted out of there from those yellow rats squirming around. What's he going to do? What's the game plan, Casterman? What you got? A little down throw. Okay, up tilt. Forward air. Put the can set up. Getting him out of there. It's just so hard for this Pichu to start anything because... Fighting Duck Hunt. How are you going to get out of this corner? Be careful of that F tilt. When spaced, it just it just seems impossible to challenge. Neutral B, neutral B. That can, that can is a wall. <laughs> he cannot get over it. Just a quick short hop could do it, but he doesn't want to invade Fawn's space. He has to be very careful because one more can setup will take the game. And there you have it. Fawn taking the game, Fawn taking game three over Caster Man with his Duck Hunt setups. Mostly just cans, and his ability to get out of Pichu combos and not let Casterman push his advantage state was especially uh, was especially what led him to get that victory right there. Quick little back throw, quick little can setups. He was consistently going for that F tilt at ledge. Honestly, I didn't know that F tilt at ledge was uh, lingering enough or could catch it, but I guess it's totally reactable. Unfortunate SD, but yeah, once again, he had to dodge those ears. Even if he was close enough, he would have just been Spotted out. Let's see, next on stream we have Vivi and Obwan. So, Obwan, fellow uh, Xenosager, I, I talked to him here and there. He has a great Wii Fit trainer, but we all know.